So this video is just a teaser to get some of you tempted to try the tool. In later videos I, I will go to explain the full length of features it has, but for now I just want to show how you can use it. So I'm going to add this world builder prefab inside the Hexile world prefabs folder and inside of it there's an endless terrain manager that will require a viewer at runtime. So I always forget and get that error. So now I'm going to do it the first thing. I'm going to create a cube and reset its position and assign it to the endless terrain manager. With that done, I'm going to go to the world builder and add the world component. And the first thing I need is to assign a chunk editor settings. So I'm going to use the default one, but you can create your own. Then I'm going to use, I'm going to click on use world editor to add new chunks to my world. And then I'm going to use the tile editor to edit the currently selected chunk, which is the green one. I only have one material which is needed for the terrain system, so I'm going to add a new material. Right here I'm going to go to, and then I'm going to select a material I previously made, which is this one. And you can see it uses a custom shader and um, texture that has 8x8 eight eight tiles. So I'm going to put that information in here, 8x8. Eight and immediately I can access it up here and there's the texture and it's been sliced properly. So I'm going to paint the top and the bottom and uh, maybe default height to zero. And right away I can start laying tiles inside my chunk. These chunks are 48 by 48 tiles. So sometimes laying the tiles one by one is a bit slow so you can increase the size of your brush to something that suits your needs and you can also change its shape to a more circular one you have other types of brushes such as the line brush that allows you to drag the lines out of a point or you can draw boxes using click and drag or circles. Uh, all these operations, if you do them with the right click instead of the left one, will erase instead of adding. And if you use the only paint option, this will affect only previously placed tiles, but empty ones will not be affected, like so. For example, let me change the tile I have selected and you can see that it only paints but does not add. Um, you have also a fill brush that you can select how it should compare. So here I'm telling it to fill only the things that share a top texture and I can then change the texture of this region. And um, now Another possibility would be to go to geometry and change the height of a region. So you can see that only the ones that share that texture are now growing. And I could change the texture of the side of the tiles, which are now actually 2.5D, they are cubes. So I could uh, use the fill tool to paint but now paint only in the bottom and for example select a new tile and you can see that it has changed that texture. You can also change the darkness of the tiles. So this is where the custom shader comes into play. So for example here I can make this region lighter or make it darker. Uh, you can also change how the textures are mapped. So for example, you can change the rotation of the textures. And you also can do this in a random fashion. So using a fill tool, I can 
ask it to use only the height and use random darkness and random rotation and there you go uh, now another interesting thing is that you can add meshes to which are not cubes to your mesh and these meshes will be integrated in the same mesh as you can see I'm not creating new game or objects or anything actually this mesh is in this viewer and it's been optimized so that it only this renders the, the faces that are needed if they're hidden by other cubes then they will not be rendered and um, so here for example I could add ramps to my uh, to my mesh these are not cubes but ramps and I can add, add them in different places and then rotate them and I can also add uh, diagonals so for example here I could add that piece and I can also rotate it to fit the diagonal I need I can add regular prefabs so here let's add one to the editor and I have I've been using this Axie works free pack to demo this and I like this statue a lot so I'll go here and just assign this one here and this is something I downloaded I did nothing special to it but then I can paint with it and I can rotate it and again this is not a separate object it's still stored inside the generated mesh and it's as a, as a sub mesh so this is nice and allows you to place static content to your world without the need to create more uh, game objects uh, other things you can do is for example you can select part of the work you've already done and use this pattern brush to paint that in different places and you can save patterns to disk so that you can use it in different projects so for example here I'm gonna call this tutorial prefab and I'm gonna create this prefab and there you go it's created the prefab and if you want to use them you just click on use my prefabs and add them in and once you add them in you can select them up here um, and now it's painting the saved version of this prefab I, I created now another interesting thing is that this is what you can do by hand placing things in different chunks but you can also use the random generation of terrains so here for example I can add a terrain setting and you can see that it's creating a whole environment for me and right now if I uh, run this you can you will see that it will create this whole mesh at runtime and it will assign uh, colliders when where they should appear and you can see that the endless terrain system is actually using a level of C of detail system you can test that in the editor by changing this slider so it's very easy to quickly create complex uh, scenarios by combining hand placement of elements with uh, procedurally generated techniques and there's an excellent tutorial by Sebastian Lang I think it's pronounced where he uh, talks about how this editor of terrains works so you should check it out it will be in the description and you can see that right now if I change any settings only the selected chunk is being updated you can change that by clicking here in update all but uh, this will be more uh, 
computationally costly, so be aware of that. Uh, but sometimes you need to see the changes update in more than one chunk. One additional thing that I haven't mentioned is that there's a layer system, so you can add layers to a particular chunk. So here, for example, I can add a new layer, and now I can select it here, and what I paint in this new layer will be placed above the previously laid one. And you can show and hide layers using these selections. So again, I will go into uh, a lot more detail of all the, the different options that I haven't covered in this teaser, but I hope at least it helps you um, get intrigued by the tool and uh, start trying it out. Okay, thanks, bye.